municipal clerks. Is that right? Is that what we got? Unbelievable. Judges today. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, I'll tell you, this is uh, it's an incredible job. It's an incredible honor being your governor. But I want to first and foremost thank y'all for what you do every day. You know, when it really boils right down to it, and I didn't I didn't think I was coming here at all, but when it really boils right down to it, you influence every life in the world every day. And that impact on our towns and cities and everything is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Now I know you've got lots and lots and lots of challenges. And at the end of the day, whether you buy it or not buy it, from the day that I walked in the door to now, we've made a lot of improvement. And we're still continuing to make all kinds of improvement each and every day. But we've got a lot to still to do. That's all there's to it. We got a lot of people that are still out there hurting, and we absolutely need, in every way, shape, form, or fashion, the rebirth of our towns and cities. We're doing stuff, and we're doing as much as a human being can possibly do. You know, I can't, I can't tell you anymore. I can talk to you till the cows come home. But yesterday, yesterday I had to have three different meetings with three different uh, conversations with the rating agencies. You know, and that was Fitch and Standard and Poor's and Boots. You know, now, and all three of those, they're looking for every clink in the armor that they can come up with in order to try to come up with a way to, to not necessarily discount our bonding, but find, a, come up with a way to make maybe, just maybe, you know, some shortfall that we may have. Now, we don't know the results of the, of the meetings yesterday, but I think they went really well. You know that every single day that we can do one more thing for our municipalities, for everyone in this state, we're trying with all in us to do it. Now, I know you face all kinds of challenges, and to be perfectly honest, the number one challenge you probably face over and over and over some way ties back to drugs. And it is cannibalizing West Virginia, but we, we are making an effort beyond belief. And we're going to continue to do that. The only thing I would say to you along that lines is just one thing. And it's just this. While everyone knows the magnitude of the problem, you know it probably better than anyone. Now, while everyone knows the magnitude of the problem, a lot of times we turn our backs, and a lot of times we push it under the rug. It is something that absolutely we have to address, and we have to do. You know, we're doing great things with our roads, and we did goodness with our elderly, and goodness with the veterans, and we've done all kinds of different stuff. But at the end of the day, whether it be education or roads or whatever, at the end of the day, the number one thing in this state that we should be dialed into all the time is this terrible, terrible drug issue because when you are three and a half times the national average in something on the bad side, you got a real problem. You got a real, real, real issue. Now, that's where I came up with the Jim's dream idea. Sure, sure, it'll, it'll move the needle. I wish to goodness that it would solve all, but it won't. I, I don't know all the issues that you deal with every day. But that's the very thing that, that's the thing that you're probably here for in many ways. And please listen to me about this. I'm not a politician. I'm a business guy that is only here for one reason. I mean, I don't care what you say, I don't care what you do. I'm only here 
to try to some way make your lives in West Virginia better. I don't want to think. There's nothing in the world that you can do other than your love that you can give to me. There's nothing. There's nothing you can do that's going that's, that's a hot tip or money or status or ego. There's nothing that you can do that anyone in this state can do to give to me to motivate me. All I want is goodness for you and goodness for this state. And believe me, B, it is one tough, tough job. And the reason it's tough is because you get air shot at you, you get accused of everything in the world, and people write all the stuff, and they, and they hide behind, well, if you're a you know, political figure, they can say and do anything about you. <clears throat> it's not very fun. That's all there's to it. Because at the end of the day, there's either no truth or almost nothing to anything. Because through my life, I'm not going to do anything. I'm sure I'm not going to do anything to benefit myself at the expense of somebody else. Now, with all that being said, I can never, and I mean this, I can never thank you enough, but I want you to know, is, is from the very depths of my heart, that many here in Charleston, in our legislature, many here, absolutely will talk to you but you have, and they want to help you, but you have got to really, really stay focused and on task in every way to where they can help you and they understand. There's so much lip service. There's so much, you know, halfway good intent. You know, at the end of the day, you give so much to us, it's unbelievable. And you take a lot of grief as well. And so, I just wanted to stop there and say hi. You know, I, I told the teachers just, just a little bit over there, but, uh, you know, this, I only tell this just to show you just who I am. But yesterday I had the opportunity to go bow hunting and I, I, I shot this really nice buck and everything and hit it and the air just deflected off the shoulder bone and went out to the skin and it's gone. And the deer's come back to the trail cameras over and over. So I went again yesterday and I, and here it comes and everything. And I pride myself with being that gum good with a bow and, and a, and, the, and I'll promise you, I can really shoot a shotgun, and I love being with my bird dogs and all that kind of stuff. But I haven't had the opportunity to be with them this year at all. I haven't been a time. But I, here's this big buck again. And this time I shoot, he's about 25 yards away, and I said, well, I got him dead for right here. That's all there's to it. And then I go out of the blind, and all of a sudden there's my hair sticking in the ground. And I look, and there's this little white hair where I've just grazed his belly. And there's not a speck of blood anywhere. And, and the deer's just running around just like he's just having fun, wondering, why does this guy keep shooting me? You know. But, but I also would just tell you just this. I'm just you. That's all I want to be. I don't want to be up on a pedestal. I don't want to be the guy, the so-called billionaire, or owns a green briar, or your governor that can't talk to you. I want to be just you. And you know why? And this is why I've wanted this all my life. Absolutely, I want to be just you because I think you're great. I think that we, the only reason on the planet that I ran for governor, the only reason that I'll run again is one thing. Too many people on the outside throw rocks at us and tell bad jokes about West Virginians and we're dark and dingy and backward and everything else, and I don't like it. I know how great you really are. I know how great our West Virginia families are, and I know how tough a job and how many things you face every day. So I can't do anything but thank you, and, and didn't mean to come in here and talk this long and everything, but I know you're doing great work, and crying out loud, you got to Standing room only, this group. So, God bless you and thank you for everything.